All right, we got Coach Shenander here. Um, let's go to Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. Hey, Eric. Uh, Northwestern with a new offensive coordinator this year. I'm just curious uh, what you see that's maybe different about their attack uh, under him than maybe th what you've seen in the past. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's a little bit different running game. Um, even though they're still going to be in some spread, they're implementing more uh, use of tight ends, multiple tight end sets, hard tight ends in the package. Um, I think they got a little better quarterback run game. Um, we, you know, we saw Peyton Ramsey last year, um, but, you know, he did some nice things when we played him and, and all throughout the year last year, and he's able to, uh, you know, get out of the trouble a little bit with the pass rush. He's able to to create some real quarterback runs for himself. Um, so, you know, the, the passing game, um, you know, it, it's similar but different routes, those types of things, more movement passes. Uh, but I think uh, Coach Pajakian has done a really good job in, in the first two games, and he obviously did a really good job at uh, Boston College as well. 24-7 uh, sports, Brian Christofferson. Hey, Eric, what's the biggest difference you've – or distance you've seen Miles Farmer, Quinton, and, and Noah Paul Gates maybe cover since they've been here the last year? And uh, I guess it, how do you feel about their position now as maybe playing some more the, this week for you and where they're at? Well, what was the first part again? Just the distance they've covered – in the last year from when they arrived to the program and, and your comfort level now and then maybe having a bigger role? Yeah, I think um, the the gap that they've bridged, so to speak, is they're, they're catching up in, in knowledge of the game, knowledge of the system, um, you know, with some of the other guys in the room. You could always tell when they first got here, both of those guys are, are super athletic. They're both, they're all physical. Uh, you know, Miles is, is a really long, long kid and, and Noah's um, as twitchy of a guy that's on the on the football team so it was just just knowing what to be and just being able to have the coaches trust them that they're going to be able to do their job snap in and snap out and I think that they've both uh, taken that under their wing and they've took that constructive criticism and they've got in the playbook they've got extra film study um, they've taken it upon themselves to, to bridge the gap that they had um, you know, and they've been taking reps with the, the ones and twos the entire, um, you know, whatever we call this thing, fall camp or, or fall season or whatever, whatever it is now. Um, but they, they've taken reps with the ones and twos, and they've just consistently gained trust of myself, Coach Fisher, Coach Frost, and, and everybody else in the program. So I think those two have done a good job of taking it on their shoulders and, and showing us that they're ready for some, some Big Ten action. John Callahan, go ahead, Sean. Hey, Coach, I know um, Isaac Gifford's been a guy, too, that's been talked about a lot. What have you seen from him, and um, how surprised are you that he's been able to kind of push himself up there um, with, with those other safeties here? And, you know, in a week like this, you might have to use a guy like Isaac Gifford. Yeah, um, not surprised. I mean, you know, a pleasant surprise. But, you, you know, a guy with like Isaac Gifford, you know, we, we knew – well, you don't exactly always know what you're getting, but you think you know what you're getting. And a guy that comes from a great family with a great pedigree, obviously his brother was a really great player here and really understood football and um, was probably more athletic than he got credit for the entire time um, he was playing college football, maybe even now. Um, just like Isaac, Isaac's more athletic than he gets credit for, and he really understands football. He really wants to work at the game. Um, he's accountable, he's dependable, and he's going to work hard every single snap. He's a guy that we know – whether we throw him out there at nickel or safety or probably even linebacker, he's going to know what he's doing and he's going to max himself out. Um, so not not a surprise that he's playing on special teams and getting some some run on the defensive side of the ball. And then is Northwestern, are they running more pro style? I mean, with their new system and I mean, is it a completely different look from the spread that you've kind of known them to run for the last several years? Yeah, I mean – yeah, it's a little. It, it's I think it's a good mix, you know, of, of pro style and, and college in college football offense um, because they do implement some of the quarterback run game. But then they're going to come back and have two tight ends and try to smash the ball a little bit, and they have a lot of pro style passes uh, mixed in there with a little under center um, as well. So um, I think that you know, Coach Bajakin, like I said, I think he's done a good job of, of using the personnel that they have and getting those guys in the right positions um, and letting them you know make the plays that they're able to make and. and you know, using their quarterback correctly. So I think the, the offense is a little different. Um, but, you know, once again, it's a mix of, of, of pro-style offense and some of the spread college stuff. Uh, Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. 
Eric, I know you said uh, last week that you overall liked your your rotation in the front seven. You had some outside linebackers over the course of the game, you know, put a hand down, um, play from a three-point stance. Um, is that, are you, did you do more of that against Ohio State than, than maybe last year? Or I guess, how, how do you like the versatility of that group to sort of be able to play on the line or a little bit off? Yeah, I mean, I think that that, that group has, has done a good job right now of embracing um, the fact that, you know, when we're in base personnel, they're outside backers. And when we're in nickel personnel, they're defensive ends. And they still have some dropping responsibilities. Um, but, but they can put their hand down a lot in the ground. So, um, you know, a lot, a lot more, um, you know, you guys watch the film, a lot more four down spacing, whatever you want to call it, four two five, four three defense, um, but a lot more of that. And those guys uh, have embraced that role pretty well. And I think we're just... Um, you know, you got to find a way to effectively use your, your personnel. And the, the effective way to use a lot of those guys is, is some hand in the ground and some standing up. So I think they've done a really great job. Coach Dawson's done a good job of, of teaching them when and where. Got time for two more here for Chins. Uh, Sam McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Hey Eric, thanks for doing this. Um, how did you think Deontay Williams played in that Ohio State game? And it, it, is there any sort of coaching you give him on he's a very physical player and you never want to you never want to remove that element of of his game but he you know he did have the shoulder injury last year and he got a targeting call even if we don't necessarily agree with the call in the first game do you talk to him about how to how to play that and 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 to maybe walk that line between making big hits but also not getting hurt again or anything like that yeah, I think I think his his body's good. You know, his shoulders fixed. I think his shoulders at 100. percent So I don't I don't think that's our worry right now. He's playing pretty free. Um, you know, I thought he played a really good football game. Um, everybody can get better. Obviously, every every single person that's on our field has some things to clean up. But he played a good football game. He was physical. Um, you know, on on the hit, it's 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 a it's a fine line. You know, in, in you know the. the did he take his head out of it? Yes. Did he hit in the strike zone? I thought so. Did he launch? No, but they called it, you know, so it's, you know, it's getting to the point where you're, you're telling those DBs that they got to go real low. And that's just a, it's a shame. Cause I think there's a lot more injuries that come from, from slicing guys knees out all the time than, than hitting in the strike zone where, where, you know, we're teaching them to, to hit. So, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, talk to some big 10 officials and, and just see how they want us to correct it. I'm, I'm not questioning their call. Um, I just want to get it corrected and, and make everybody play safely and appropriately. How do you describe, how would you describe Miles Farmer's game? Just like what kind of player is he? It's, it's possible that fans and us will see him more t this week than maybe we have in the past. How would you describe his game? Yeah, I think he's, um, you know, he's a very, I would describe him as a very active safety. Um, He's, he can cover a lot of ground quickly because of his, his length and because of his speed. Um, and he's also a very physical kid. You know, he, he can be physical at the line of scrimmage. He can be a physical tackler. Um, he's physical on, on reroutes in, in the perimeter. Um, but like I said, in the post, he can cover a lot of ground as well. And I feel pretty good about him in man coverage. So I think he's, you know, he's, he's what we were looking for when we recruited those guys. Um, so I, I think, you know, I think he's going to come out and have a really good football game. He's ready to play. Um, like I said, he's, he's practiced the right way all through this whole fall camp, knowing that his shot is one play away and he, he's ready to take it. Last one for coach, uh, Michael Brunts, 24 seven sports. Hey Eric, uh, just kind of talking about Phil Darius pain and, and kind of what he did for you in that opener. Um, I mean, did, is he kind of grown into the player that you thought he would be uh, when you recruited him and, and maybe, uh, his versatility, I guess. How is that kind of helping your defense right now? Yeah, I mean, he's getting there. You know, he uh, he was a guy that had an injury coming out of junior college, so he he didn't get um, as much work in the off season as we'd have liked to to have. But he's done a good job with the reps that he's got, and um, you know, he's he's made himself into a contributor right away. I think he's just going to continue to get better and better as he gets more reps, as he gets more real game action. Uh, but he's a, he's a guy that's got a, a really bright future. You know, he can, he can rush the passer. He can set the edge. Um, he's got some uh, pretty good um, explosive, you know, side-to-side -side explosiveness when, when he's on the line of scrimmage. So um, he's one of those guys where, you, you know, we need, we need a couple of those guys that can, you know, we can turn them on and go get after the quarterback when we need to. And also they can go play the, the quarterback in the zone read stuff. Um, but he's, he's done a really good job in, in, in you know, 
just immersing himself in college football in Nebraska, um, the system, just day to day life. How, how does it change from being at you know junior college to to a Big Ten institution? Um, but he's he's done a great job with that, and he's a guy that you know we, we feel great about. We can count on him. Um, does everything the right way. And so I, I just think he's he's only scratched the surface of what he's going to be. Great, thank you, Coach. Uh, right, we thanks, will guys. have Coach uh, Fisher here shortly.